Hello and welcome to the Unknown Comics Gaming Podcast, name TBD. <laughs> I'm your host, Brandon, with my co-hosts, Chris and Tanner. Everybody say hi. Hello. What's up? And uh, yeah, we don't have a, a lot to go over, a lot of different things to go over today, but we have one really big one. So if you are a uh, 40K player, uh, this week was, uh, was pretty huge. So I will, uh, I'll let these two guys kind of take the, the, the brunt of it, and I'll, I'll jump in uh, whenever possible. But this week, Games Workshop uh, dropped their, I guess they're doing it biannually. Is that their, their plan to, to, uh, to do an FAQ? <laughs> But, you know, they say they probably won't be anything else for another six months, or at least the summer. Yeah. So it kind of seems that, that That's the schedule that they've done for Blood Bowl and stuff like you that. Know, I think that's how they're spacing out FAQs and stuff. It's like they have a big release. They gave it six months, and then they fix everything that's wrong with yeah. it. Yeah. Or, yeah, and or that, clear up things. And that's know, smart like to, that. to, to give the game a little bit of time to bake to see how the meta actually, you know, because if you need jerk reaction to everything, then you're always just playing catch up to yourself, right? right. Yeah. Um, you know, let let stuff kind of play out and see how people adjust to it, and then and then determine, you know, which you know, yeah. and FAQ is one thing, and then you know, just changing the rules another too. Well, and you've always got people that are going to start abusing something. They find something that is just OP overpower. Yeah, and so they want to they want to always keep bringing balance, right? right. Well, well, because well. well, and we didn't have much of a competitive scene the past <clears throat> year, but there's always that one army that you are yeah. gonna see because there's well, that it, one guy that just wants to win and nothing yeah. else. And yeah. and if you're gonna have a, a long game, you know, a game that has a long lifespan, you know, even if you do get it completely dialed in and balanced, which I don't think you can ever do, you. You have to shift the meta around. You have to change it up. Right. One, it's it's going to force people, or it's not going to force people. It's going to make people want to buy into other factions, which means more yeah. model well, sales. And, and you know, also, they, some of the FAQs they clearly state we're changing it so that you can take some of those models yeah. you want to take. Exactly. Right. Well, know? and at the end of the day, they're a miniature company, not a game company. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The the rule set is the vehicle in which you know you utilize their miniatures some people just buy them paint them and yeah own them they yeah. don't play the game yeah it's it's all hobby you yeah. know exactly so so we've got that we've got the faq here um so we won't uh i'm not going to bring up a bunch of, of stuff on screen they're going to be talking about it more but uh for those yeah, for those just, who maybe eventually listen to an audio version if one ever ends up existing it's uh, a uh, 40k wide faq although a lot of stuff didn't really get much. Um, well, and we're still pretty early in ninth edition. There's yeah. not very many armies that have ninth edition rules yet. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Um, we yeah, with only what four, four codexes. So. Five. Yeah. Five. Well, I guess we're counting supplements because we got. Did we get two the first month, two the second month, and then blood? So Angels here's the blo- here's the blood angels yeah. codex yeah. supplement errata. Yeah, and there's not much change there. Um, just a couple of answers on some special rules for characters and things like that. Um, I lost the, the, the Space Marines and the core rule book, and then your uh, 2020. Um, what is it? Uh, I lost the rule book. It was here earlier. The 2020 uh, mission pack and stuff like that, which is, you know, match play, things like that. Yeah. We were kind of talking about this before the show. So. Um, as a Death Guard player, we didn't get anything. Yeah. I think, you know, they're probably holding out for the new codex for that before they change a whole bunch of stuff yeah which makes sense we know based on just on uh comments i've seen on instagram from gw and Mm -hmm. apparently in one of their faq or their uh uh, not faqs in one of their posts they've been saying that they're going to be releasing a um a codex every month for sure Um, that's the plan uh so uh we don't know which one's going to be this month all i know is dark eldar comes out before death guard i'm going to throw something (laughs) Probably going to throw a couple something. <laughs> so, um, but I know for sure there's not any releases the next couple of weeks. So, um, but um, hopefully by the end of January we have some new codex coming. We know we have uh, new Slanish stuff coming out in February for, yep, uh, for Sigmar, Sigmar. So, which you know, a lot of times with the uh, factions that kind of cross both games, mm-hmm. if we get something new in Sigmar, we're going to be getting something new Slanish in 40k. Yeah, no mm-hmm. one. I mean. It makes it makes sense for those kind of armies for sure because yeah. I mean the demons are you know and that's that's been the history of demons ways, so. through mm-hmm. GW for for years I mean 
you would have square based demons in 40k because yeah. that's how they came. Yeah, you know? yeah. most people didn't say anything, you know. No. But now the fact that they're all you know on circular bases is pretty nice. Although I don't think all of them are the same size bases. But it doesn't matter. It does. Does base size matter anymore? No, not really. Yeah, I think it does. As long as you don't model for advantage. Here's yeah. the reason. It, here's the reason it does. There are a lot of rules that make you have to be wholly within a certain circumference of something. So if your base sizes are smaller, then you can get more in those those sizes of circumference. But is that the base wholly within, or is that the model wholly within? Every everything has to be within that thing, and if you're not, they go. Okay. So as as long as Oh, so you're saying make a, the base tinier than it needs to be? Yeah, if they're, so you if they're smaller, the you can get more models in there. Yeah, so which I think the the base size between the two game I think only varies if you buy the older boxes. Yeah, and I think that's I think that's probably the case. Some of in them the in the repackaged stuff yet. they've been updated, yeah. but if you end up with an older box, you're going to have different bases. So now, like if that's a model that hasn't had an update yet, then you know that's just the way it is. That's fine. So what are the big sweeping FAQ clarifications and changes to the core rules? So I think there's two that's that are particularly important the first is whoever wins the roll off at the beginning of the game has to go first you no longer get to choose first or second because uh that's kind of an advantage okay uh, as far as choosing so they've eliminated the choice pretty much yeah you win the roll you go first Uh, and you don't have to play it this way this is these are mainly match play rules right but i mean i'm sure most people are still going to just play it that way no matter what yeah that that typically match play typically drives casual play Yes, yeah, at least as a baseline, unless something is just so egregious that a local meta just says no. If you we're get not into doing a this. tournament, or, I mean that's yeah. that's how it's going to be. So I mean, and then even well. some tournaments kind of deviate from. And then the the, rules. the other big one is kind of helps with balance the point scoring. So uh, player one has a pretty big advantage for scoring points, uh, just because they can get to everything sooner, start camping on objective objectives and uh the way that it's counted they're they just have a a timing advantage yeah so now player two in the very last turn battle round player two now gets their points at the end of the turn instead of the beginning of the turn Mm -hmm. so that gives them one extra turn to score points basically it makes it to where their last turn matters you could think of it as in terms of like baseball like if you're the last person to go you still got a chance Right. Deal. right, because if you, you know. score your points at the beginning of that turn, then why play the rest of the turn? Because right. you're not going to get any points towards the. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So yeah, you know the like, game's over. It'd be like a walk off. Yeah, like yeah. You're talking about in baseball. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think that I think that balances the playing field between player one and player two. They they wanted to make it feel like because a lot of times right now there are, there are some circumstances where if you get second turn, it's an advantage just based on setup. Yeah. But as far as the board goes. It's really almost never an advantage. So why? Well, because one of the issues I've come across, uh, especially on a smaller battlefield, uh, player two, so player one runs up, grabs all the objectives. It's a smaller battlefield, so things are in range faster. Player two gets a bunch of their stuff shot off the board at the, there before they've even had a chance to do anything. Yeah. Um, and then you're playing catch up from there on out through the rest of the so game. So let me ask this: Why is scoring at the end of turn universal to all turns, both players? And is so um, it depends. So you have primary objectives, and then you have your secondaries. Right. Some are scored at the beginning of your turn. Some are scored at the end of your turn. Right. Yeah, and some of the some of them are scored at the beginning of the player round. Yes. And then your turn. Right. And I get that. You know, so. I'm I'm so I'm looking at you know games like Infinity where you never score anything at the beginning of anything. Mm-hmm. It's always either at the end of the turn or the end of the round. So the things you get at the beginning, like, so you wouldn't get the primaries the first turn, right? So basically at the beginning of your turn, what you're usually getting is a things you're holding from last turn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're already controlling those. So the person can't take that from you until the beginning of the next round. Are, are, are games still, uh, six turns and then they're five, th- only. five, five only, no potential for it to no, ke- no. keep going. Five gotcha. is the end. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was another way of making sure the games go faster. Well, yeah, yeah. and for tournament play, you having set amount of rounds, mm-hmm. you you definitely want. If you have if you have the one in six chance that this game yeah. is going to keep going, and you know, going I pulled and off going and going. I pulled off a couple miracles on that yeah. ending dice roll. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, that's the thing. A lot of times, if I just had another round, yeah, uh-huh. you know. Although yeah. I haven't had many games that go past. I haven't. I've only played. Mm, 
because I'm still uh, learning the new stuff. Uh, I've only played one game over a thousand points, but none of my games have gone past three and a half rounds. Yeah, yeah that's kind of been my experience. By turn four, at least one person's pretty well been. You could call it. Yeah, there's no there's way. no way they can come back. Are all the the match play battle plans are they all pretty symmetrical, balanced? Uh, to each side, or do they? I think I would say there's, it's it's sometimes your army can. You know, depending on what you roll, if you're but, doing it randomly, but as far the as the, rule, the rules it, of the battle plan, I would say so. I, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, now there are some crusade battles that are skewed to one side or right. the other, but, but that's, that's all about the narrative. Yeah, that's you know? narrative. That makes sense. Match play, you kind of have to have it symmetrical from the get go. Yeah. And, and level playing field. Um. So so aside, so those are the two big ones for the core rules. What about some of the factions? What are some of the big uh, FAQs that came out for the different different factions? So for most of the factions, I'm not seeing too many updates yet. Uh, most of the big thing was they did some point configuration. Yeah. Uh, this was for Necrons and Space Marines. Uh, these are two of the newer codexes, but what they've seen is that, okay, um, these guys are a little bit overpowered, so we just want to make them cost a little bit more in the game. Yeah, so. like, I, I know people spammed Eradicators and yeah. the little uh, four-wheeler thing. Yeah, the ATVs, uh, and uh, the, that was a big change. That's not even point cost. The Apothecary mm-hmm. no longer can bring back the ATVs at full health, okay. which is what they were able to do. Uh, so Apothecaries. That, that never made sense. <laughs> can bring back an infantry or a bike unit. Uh, you know. Right. Um, so the ATV is considered a bike, so they were able to bring it back full full eight wound ATV. <laughs> um, so that sure. was definitely being spammed. I mean, there's a <laughs> so now it's excluded from that I mean, apothecary on the, rule. On that on that note, tanks have marine drivers. Apothecary right? should be able to bring tanks back. Yeah. Well, right? that was another big thing is the fact that the ATV is a bike, but it also explodes. <laughs> so they were like, wait. So it, so it's got to be one or the other, you yeah, guys. Yeah. Is so, it a vehicle or is it a bike? <laughs> so it still is a bike. It still does explode, but it no longer. Wow. Is uh is attached to the apothecary rule there, uh, and then of course, like I said, your eradicators, your inceptors, and uh, your outriders all went up five points a model. Okay, uh, I think which that isn't, was isn't isn't a lot. It's not a lot, but it makes a difference because it does because the army I just played two days ago is no longer legal. When you, I mean, when you're playing so, someone that's taking two two units of eradicators and they've got six multi meltas coming at your face yeah. yeah that's not fun it takes a lot of shots away with them getting two shots each when they're shooting at the same target right um that's a big deal i mean i, I took down uh i mean if you a, know you're going to really quickly if you know you're going to be against eradicators do don't bring any armor i yeah. mean because there's no point they're just going to die horribly yeah. Yeah. so and then uh outriders of course you can only take a squad of three outriders anyway um so i you know 15 points more for that that squad doesn't seem like a really big deal. Um, if you were taking a full fledged outrider squad at six models, I mean that can get pricey. And you know that, that's kind of the um, the sweet spot for when you're going around changing points. Make it to where it's not a big deal, mm-hmm. but now you have to start making choices when you're building your army. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then Necron, uh, the reanimator for Necrons, of course, it, it's a cool idea, cool model. It gives you plus one to reanimation protocols, but it was like 110, 100, it was kind of, a, it was a waste of points. So they've made it, I think it's 80 points now. So they dropped oh, okay. that significantly uh, to see if more people wanted to, you know, put that in their army list and things like that. Right. So, because um, it doesn't do a whole lot as far as shooting and stuff goes. It's just there for it's that buff. extra buff. Yeah. It's, I think it's a six inch aura, I think. I'm not quite sure. Um, so uh, it, it that, I think that's a good thing for that, that as well. So, yeah. um, but didn't see a whole lot of other stuff besides that. Um. Uh, some Blood Angels stuff we already knew, like the fact that Sanguiners, uh, you can't drop in on first turn, which yeah, I don't know. Still feel like he should be able to. It's a cool special rule. He should be able to use it whenever he wants. But you know, whatever. Well, and then do you pay for it? Right? I mean, are you? Does the restriction of the ability now? make his point cost outrageous no no i mean because everybody already kind of figured that's he's in reserve so the reserves don't come until turn two or more right um but it didn't clearly state that in his rules so people were uh or you know saying well maybe he could do that because basically if he's on the board turn one he can just heroically intervene anywhere on the board yeah and go be in combat but if he's off the board he can't do that until turn two or later but he could still just show up in combat and heroically intervene which is 
pretty freaking awesome. I yeah. mean, he's not the best character as far as fighting and stuff goes, but he could step in and hold his own for a minute if he needed to. Yeah. So. Well, cool. Um, That's the gist of it. I know none of my army's got any big changes. Yeah. I mean, we're really waiting on codexes for a lot of this stuff. Yeah, and uh, we'll see. We know we still have Dark Eldar, uh, the Chikari, uh, Dark, Dark Angels, and, um, uh, of course, the Death Guard all coming up. So um, we'll see when those come out and how quickly we'll be able to start playing those guys. And uh, then hopefully we'll have new releases on what's up next. Uh, yeah, it's been... Uh, it's been a while since we've actually got new releases. Yeah. I mean, they've previewed a bunch of stuff, but we're, we're waiting for pre-order dates, you know? Yeah. So uh, coming out uh, February, uh, another one of our favorite games, uh, Infinity Sci-Fi, uh, or just, I think, just call it Infinity now. I think they've kind of dropped the sci-fi. I uh, don't know that they've ever said that. They've always called it Infinity the Game. Yeah, Infinity to differ- the Game. To differentiate yeah. it from, so, like... The video games and stuff like that. But, um, so, of course, from Corvus Valley, uh, this coming out, uh, they got some new stuff coming out next yeah. month. So, yeah. So this is this is one of the ones uh, coming out. It's for the nomads. These are the the cheer cheer killers. Love me some space pirates. And uh, that's not a very uh, big. Hold on, let's see what I can do here. Shabam. Ooh, those are nice. Uh, are those like Catholic schoolgirl things they're, going they're, on here? They're, they're cheer killers. They're cheerleaders. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so, I, yeah. lo- I love their models and what they do with them. Man, they're just so cool. Yeah. yeah. So, their uh, sculptors are going to be back there just being like, oh, yeah, I'm going to have fun with this one. Right. So there's that. And let's see here. Hold on. Brandon's learning how to use his keyboard. Uh, I'll put it in full screen. That's, that was my fault. Uh, let's see here. They've also got... So they also released, oh, we'll just leave it up. Uh, so for those listening, uh, so they also released uh, John Hawkwood. So he's the leader of the White Company, mm-hmm. uh, uh, North of the NA2, non, non-aligned army. Um, so one of the mercenary companies, which for those for those have been out of Infinity for a while, there used to be just you know the big factions, and then you had the sectorial armies inside of each faction, which basically... Um, sometimes we're mostly that faction's units, uh, but could borrow from others. Um, then, uh, uh, a few years ago, they started doing the non-aligned armies, the, mm-hmm. basically the mercenary companies. And so these were, they're basically sectorials in of themselves that don't have like a parent sectorial that are really just hodgepodges of a bunch of different models and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So the white company has a lot of, um, models from Yuching and, and Pan Oceania, um, and then, of course, their leader uh, is is John Hawkwood, which he's actually based on a real world person from the 1600s. Cool. He actually, or it was it was it was late medieval times that he actually had a mercenary company called the White Company. Mm. So they they've done that with quite a few characters. Uh, they, they pulled out of history. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Gutierrez pulls a lot of characters. So so in Infinity, you have characters that are called recreations. Mm. Um, he's not one of them. He's just coincidentally okay. named and, and stuff like that. But uh, William Wallace and Joan of Arc mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and uh, Sun Tzu, Sun Tzu and Saladin. They're all what are called recreations that, that Aleph basically created using basically AI and recovered genetic material. Yeah. I don't know how they would have gotten recovered genetic material from these people, but cool. Uh, Jurassic Park, bro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they kidding. were all frozen in sap. Mosquitoes <laughs> from that uh, earth that they're no longer around. And so they create these these legendary characters that, that um, you know, so like they created William Wallace to, Aleph created William Wallace to try to kind of get Ariadna on board with the, the, the greater whole, you mm-hmm. know, technology wise mm-hmm. and stuff like that, you know, because he would, he would, you know, kind of lead the, the Scots on Ariadna to kind of, kind of rally behind him and join. And then he kind of ends up just going off the rails and being like, no, mm-hmm. I'm staying in Ariadna. I'm Scottish. Mm-hmm. Let's what, do this. What yeah. would you expect? From exactly. <laughs> yeah. He's won our loss. freedom. Um, so, so John Hawkwood, um, is, is one of those historical characters. Um, stat wise, he's, he's okay. Um, I wouldn't, I'm not like gaga about him, but he, he does have a, dev, does have a pretty decent model. Um, probably, probably not my favorite, uh, in the, in the whole line. Um, and then, yeah, they actually, they, they, uh, they posted kind of, they're kind of loose roadmap for what 2021 looks like. And a lot of it is just kind of reviewing, 
2020. 2020, um, because, uh, you know, they, they just dropped Defiance. We mentioned that last week. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, a lot of it is just is, is kind of fleshing out a lot of the Code 1 armies um, and then uh, and then continuing, you know, because the four Code 1 armies, Pan O, Yu Ching uh, combined and, and O12, are, are constantly getting, like, their booster packs and action packs and stuff like that. They released a Hawk Islam action pack. Um, so they're doing... You know, Corvus Belly's big thing is is getting away from individual a lot of individual SKUs, right? Blister packs of models. They don't have blister packs anymore. I don't think I haven't seen a blister pack in a very long time from them. Um, so they're all in these small to, to large boxes. So army boxes being the biggest, then you have action packs, and then you have booster packs, and then just yeah. the the model boxes, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's characters, booster, characters, two or three models. Characters and stuff may still be in blisters. Now that I think about it, yeah, uh, I, there are. That's what I was gonna say. I think the only thing I've seen are yeah. specific models. Yeah. Um, uh, but generally, like the cheer killers, they'll be in a box of four, yeah. or 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 whatever. Um, so, which I think is good overall. That's, yeah, that's it, easier it, to work it's, with. It's easier for a store definitely when yeah. you don't have to carry it, uh, as many SKUs, and especially uh, you know when Infinity's model range is is so huge. You know, I think at first it was harder to do that because they held out all the different weapons. Yeah, yeah, that'd be my only concern. Is like, but now they've kind of streamlined that. So. If they can make make it somewhat multi part, where you can choose your weapons, I don't think they're going to do that. I because think I think they are so uh, so focused on uh, how the model looks. Yeah, that it it kind it you have to be really good at modding and kit bashing uh, to get it. But because that's thing the is, only thing that sucks about that is when you have to buy. Four yeah. boxes. To get I the will right say that the, the Infinity Corvus Belly in the Infinity community is not super huge on WYSIWYG. Yeah, right. Yeah. You're you're okay to proxy stuff. Well, and you only have to keep track of fifteen or less models when you're playing a game, so it right. shouldn't be right too hard. Yeah, it's definitely not your your big forty k or, yeah, or fantasy like, Wait, battle. I thought you said right. that guy didn't have that. Oh, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah, I, yeah. I and generally, uh, you know, and 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 part of it is, you know, if I go to a tournament. Uh, I'm printing off a courtesy list for you as well. Right. Right. So, so you know what everybody that's public information has. Mm. Right. Um, as opposed to, uh, you know, 40K where that's not really a thing where you give them your army list. Uh, well, not, I mean, but I think a... at the beginning of any game I've played a 40K and even one I've seen, everybody goes over what they have. Yeah. You know, I do that and, like, you know, this person, he's got this trait and this weapon and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. Because, you know, there are some things you do need to. For sure, I, th- I like the idea of a courtesy list because, um, especially when you have a game that has a lot of special rules, even if I go over everything at the beginning of the game, what are the odds that you're going to remember it for the entire right. game? You're going to mm-hmm. ask me again. Now, what does that guy do? If I have a list in front of me and I can be like, oh, the the Masai Moran you know, has th- crazy koalas, has this, and yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. I would think the main reason that's not super popular in 40K is because the lists are so much longer takes a i mean I, more you can, effort you can do it condensed I well mean, but most people yeah. they don't make a physical list yeah. they're just reading out of their codex i think the yeah. best the or best thing on their phone right the best thing was when my friend ethan did a shes vasti list and you know because a courtesy list doesn't print what's private information mm-hmm. so he printed his courtesy list there was nothing on there <laughs> because they were all either in hidden deployment or yeah. or that is the airborne. one thing about infinity that you know you have all those kind of cool little specialties that you can yeah. you know completely oh whoop hi, well, I'm here <laughs> and and I guess 40k has it with with deep strike and, and yeah. stuff like that yeah, like gene stealers can do that I mean yeah. you can they deploy can... your whole gene stealer but that's not yeah. on the board but that's I mean in infinity it's way more common to yeah. have mm-hmm. have stuff like that I mean everybody has a hidden lieutenant yeah. that's just part of the game yeah right? um but uh but yeah, so so yeah, Infinity's still still going strong. You know, COVID kind of hit them pretty pretty hard. You know, the 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 big thing with them was they dropped uh, Code One last year, mm-hmm. and so you know everybody was supposed to get Code One and really be kind of playing yeah. that rule set out and kind of it was it was almost because it is the the first step into uh, Fourth Edition. It is Fourth Edition. Yeah, it's just it's the basic rule set. And then fourth edition is basically the advanced rule set smashed onto it. Mm-hmm. Nothing changes from code one to fourth edition. Nothing, nothing goes backwards. Let's say everything from normal fourth edition just tacks onto it. So it's it's a lot better jumping in point. Yeah. Now, I I don't like that they weren't able to do all at least the main factions 
in code one. I get why they're not doing it. It's a skew thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And also it's some, some armies lose their charm when you don't, when you, when they don't have these advanced rules. Right. right? Um, So, you know, when nomad doesn't have nomads don't have access to these big hacking lists, because there's only two programs in code one Mm -hmm. um, for hacking programs, then nomads kind of, kind of fade away. A left, it would be very hard to make work yeah. in in they in the basic code one because all of that yeah so <laughs> and you could do it you could still tweak the rules they're just yeah. going to be very generic and basic right um, but I think from a marketing standpoint because what what you're still seeing is is in their mind you know people walk into a store they don't know what infinity is they see the code one boxes that's where the store needs to steer them mm-hmm. hey look at these four factions that's where you start mm-hmm. you build them out you go into fourth edition. And then eventually you pick up one of the the other fourth edition factions, right? Well, that's one of the hardest things about getting into tabletop gaming is you don't want to be overwhelmed with choices when you're trying to get into a game. But what happens in reality is somebody walks into a store, sees the entire model range, falls in love with the faction that's now not in code one. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. So now, how do you how do you get them to? Well, in a way, that's hard though, because you know the number one rule of most things like that is you want to play what you like. Yes. You know? Yeah. And if Which, you like what the, how that looks, then you're going to want to play now, with it. what a lot of people can do, do is, um, you know, I've heard, I've heard Workhorse tell people, okay, buy into Nomads. But what we'll do is, when I'm teaching you to play, we'll start with Code 1, but what you'll do is you'll proxy your model is, you'll use the Yu Ching profiles. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And then you'll just do proxying. And, until and, it's time. Until, until, you're, until it's time for you to go to N4, then we'll start actually rolling in. Or... You know, and there's been people that have gone on, gone in, and pretty much made code one versions of those factions. They've they've pretty much eliminated all the skills out of the 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 profiles and kind of tweaked the 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 points a little bit because the point system is different from code one to to N four. Mm-hmm. It basically they kind of move the decimal mm-hmm. for a lot of stuff, um, so it's not nearly as granular. Um, and and so there's there's ways to do it right, um, and, and really the jump from from code one to N four isn't huge. You can still teach somebody yeah. to play in N four, but what you're doing a lot of times when you do that, you're you're ignoring those rules that N four brings in that code yeah. one doesn't. Um, so, and of course, you know, code one introduced the smaller map size mm-hmm. for different points point values. N four took that too, and and it seems like a lot of games are doing that. Right, um, you know, if you're if you're playing smaller, you're playing on a smaller surface, which yeah. playing was, faster, playing quicker. Right, you're getting you're, more games in. You know, and especially for something like Infinity, which is um, when you do have so when you play a 150 point game, now you play it on a 24 by 32. Okay, that's what you're playing the 150 point game yeah. on. You could like literally play on this table here. Yeah, up yeah. to 300, which is still on the 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 four foot by four foot, 48 by 48. Um, if you were to play 150 points on 48 by 48, which we used to, that's yeah, how, I mean, we used to do that. The problem is, is if you're playing the three turn limit, it's hard to get across all that. It's it's it, yeah. If you deploy at normal deployment ranges and stuff, it makes for a really boring game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because you you don't not only is the you don't have as many models crowding, but you need other models yeah. orders. There wasn't a lot of range at that time. Yeah, to to start things. pushing. So yeah. anyway, that's our rant. Again, thank you guys for joining us this week. Uh, we'll come back next week with uh, some more gaming news and and, and theories. Um, again, you can catch you're, you're catching this on YouTube. Uh, no audio version just yet. We're working on it uh, for those that that need a commuter version. But anyway, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week.